Welcome to Well Traveled Life, Jonathan and Jennifer. This is a series of videos. Yeah, it's about the Isle of Skye. The first in this series is from Quan Beg, which is the house that we rented. And we started with this one because we think it's important that you stay in the Isle of Skye. It is a big island. There's lots to see, and there's a lot of people there, and the weather is kind of crazy. So you need time to really explore. You also need time just to bask in the vastness and the beauty of this island. So check out our video on Quambeg. It's an awesome place to stay right on the coastline. The next video in this series will take you from Portree up the coastline past Lake Fado and Bridesvale Falls to the old man of store. That video also features a drone adventure and an unexpected hike. was with us for the entire time that we were in Skye, which was about a week, and we hired Wooly from Wooly's Tours and Taxi Services for a day of touring to get the most out of the island. And the Isle of Skye was certainly one of our favorite uh, stops last year. Our first video covered that area uh, between Portree and the Old Mount of Store. In this one, we'll go north of that. And in the final one, we'll take the other side of the island. Each area includes places you've never heard of and the places everyone's heard of. In this video, we're gonna cover Milt Falls, Kilt Rock, Staffan and Staffan Island, the Dinosaur Prince at Ankaran, and the Quar Rang. Lilt Falls plunge 90 meters down into a really narrow gorge. It's a great starting place. Driving north from the Old Man of Store, you'll come across Lilt Falls. Lilt Falls is more than just a rushing waterfall, which is even more rushing after rain. It comes from the Lilt River and it's this divided gorge. In fact, Lilt means the divided burn or burn with one high bank. So the falls are actually cutting through this gorge. And this is an area that was mined for diotomite, which is like chalk. And it was a thriving business area when that mining was going on. Inland, there is a town and you can take a hike to go see that. And you'll find remnants of the railroad that would bring the diatomite back out to the sea where it was shipped. There was a couple of diatomite uh, digging areas in Staffen. From 1900 to 1960, you really have this huge industry that was taking place. Although today it's going to look exceptionally barren to you, except for this waterfall and all of the people that are there to see the waterfall. You will not be alone when you come to any of the major sites in Isle of Skye. So you just need to plan to share that experience with a whole bunch of people from around the world that you're going to come to know and appreciate. You can hike down to the bottom of the falls. Just be very careful. After heavy rains, it can be really slippery and muddy. Kilt Rock is just three and a half miles north of Lilt Falls, so let's head there next. Staffen is known for its dinosaur tracks, and Krieg and Filid, the Gaelic name for the rock with the kilt-like appearance, is Kilt Rock. In 1982, at Brothers Point, a footprint of an ornithopod was discovered. Kilt Rock is one of the most popular tourist attractions on the Isle of Skye. There are both bus stops and parking spaces near the rock. It's fully accessible, so you can get out and see it relatively easy. There has been some concern about landslides and rock falling, so do check the 
conditions before you go out there. If you need public toilets just two miles north of it at the Staffen Community Center, you can get public restrooms. So when you come to Kilt Rock, I want you to do it in this order. Stand in the parking lot facing the ocean and check the area to the right first. You're going to see these magnificent cliffs. They're just striking. And these rock, these big rock formations down below. Go there first. Then when you've gotten your pictures there, go ahead, turn your head around to the left and you're going to see more. You're going to see more than Kilt Rock. It's not just these striated basal columns, which are very cool. There's a waterfall right there. Shh. Kilt Rock is essentially a 90 meter or a 295 foot cliff. It's named for its resemblance to a Scottish kilt. Columns are sea weathered. And part of that kilt like look is that they can appear to be tartan in color. It offers stunning natural beauty and a glimpse into the geological history of the region. It's made up of basalt columns that have been formed by volcanic activity over millions of years, and they're stacked on top of each other. So it creates this striking visual effect. It is part of an outdoor museum and offers views of the sea, there are waterfalls, and the skyline of Portree. From the cliff, you can look out for seabirds, You'll see golden eagles and white-tailed eagles. And in the summer, you may even see dolphins and other marine mammals. Strong winds have the ability to cause these haunting, beautiful sounds right up around the lookout point. Just a few more miles up from Kilt Rock and about 17 miles north of Portree is Staffen and Staffen Island. The Gaelic name for this area is Antaubsir, which translates as the east side because it's on the northeast coast of the Trotternish Peninsula, overlooked by the Trotternish Ridge with those famous rock formations from the store and the quarrying. It's important to recognize their Gaelic heritage because this is one of the areas on Sky that still speak Gaelic and are really adamant about continuing that language. So you'll even find the primary school being transitioned to a Gaelic school. Drum Mamintin is the Ridge of Ages. It is the Sky Eco Museum. This museum without walls is in the northeast part of Sky and encompasses that Crofton community of Staffen, or as we said, the Gaelic name is Antob Sir. But the actual name Staffen comes from the old Norse term Staffer meaning pillars, which is a reference to the basal columns that make up the cliffs, and they are spectacular. You'll want to exit the main road and head down towards the slipway and there is free parking on the side of the road that you can access to get to the beach of Ancoran. You'll want to make your way to the rocky coastline of Ancoran. Here a local resident found a slab bearing a dinosaur track. It was probably made by a small ornithopod, but experts have since found more dinosaur prints of up to 50 centimeters, the largest found in Scotland and made by a creature similar to the Megalosaurus. These are about 160 million years old and are the youngest dinosaur remains to be found in Scotland. Though they may be covered by sand, it's worth going around and taking a peek to see if you can find the tracks. There are information boards showing you what you're looking for, what the tracks will look like, and which animals those tracks belong to. About the third or fourth rock, big rock, and that's where the dinosaur footprint is.
Staffen Island lies 150 yards offshore from the coast of Ankaran. And it is uninhabited except between the months of October and January. And during that time, Ian McDonald takes his herd of cattle and swims them across the shore during the lowest tide in October and the lowest tide in January so that they can graze on fresh farmland. From the age of 14 until he was in his 80s, Ian used to jump in the water and swim with the cattle. In his 80s, he started using a boat. His son Callum now makes the boat ride. They just tied them all together, tied them onto the back of the boat, and the cattle had to swim, you know. The Kerrang is perhaps the piece de resistance on the Isle of Skye. Don't miss this. It takes the form of a craterous hollow surrounded by a high rampart of rock, but this isn't exactly all that it is. Kurang, meaning rounded fold in Old Norse, was formed from a landslide and is one of the most stunning otherworldly landscapes on the island. The Trotternus Ridge was formed by a massive landslide and that created these high cliffs, these hidden plateaus, and these huge pinnacles of rock. There's a seven kilometer loop walk that has a designated trail that will take you up through the prison and the rock pinnacles to the cliff face, around to the hidden plateau that can't be seen from below, and then back to the parking lot. It is gonna take at least two hours and that's without stops. And there are some difficult scrambles and some styles and is definitely a walk you only want to take in good weather because of the steep slopes and the muddy trails in the rain or high winds. It would be dangerous if you didn't have good visibility and sure footholds. There's a single track road that connects Staffen with Uig over on the other side of this peninsula. The car park for the Kurang is up at the top where those two roads meet. There's space for quite a few cars, but it gets really crowded, especially during the summer months. The road up from Staffen is a series of hairpin turns that at night in the rain can feel fairly unmanageable. This is when we were so glad we had a driver with us. It isn't just other cars, it isn't the trucks, the buses, the campers, it's everything else that's on the road. We went back to the Koring on our own, but we did it by going up through Uig and over and then coming back again through Uig and not doing the staff inside a second time. And the road back down to Uig on the other side is no wider, but it did feel that the hairpin turns weren't quite as dangerous. But anytime you're on a single track road, with lots of turns and steep slopes and a variety of different vehicles, people and animals on the road, you really do need to be careful. It has to be the focus on the driving, not the views. We were so lucky to have Jonathan as our driver.
There isn't a part of Sky we didn't love, but we were obviously enamored and captivated with the Korang. I think this is the place where not only did we want to hike, we wanted to camp, we wanted to stay. There's so much to see, whether it's sunny days or cloudy, rainy days, it is just spectacular at every turn, in every direction. It was beautiful. Join us as we move on to a different part of the Isle of Skye in our next video, featuring whiskey, castles, and beaches. Mm -hmm.